Philip Beadle is no ordinary English teacher. Based at Eastleigh Community School in East London, he's just won the National Award for Secondary School Teacher of the Year. I recall my, my mentor at Cumberland saying that teaching is either unbelievably uplifting or spirit crushing the next moment, and I, I did have a bit of that. My first couple of lesson observations didn't actually go very well, so perhaps I wasn't perceived to be the glorious addition to the profession which, which I bask in now. Um, this is a year nine boys class. Um, we're currently doing Macbeth in preparation for Sats. Um, we're doing some stuff about the culpability for Macbeth's actions. Uh, it's a speaking and listening class. Um, it's a technique which I think I generated. I think it's my copyright. Um, and it's called Argument Tennis. And it needs a radically different class setup, which eventually gets to be the shape of a tennis court. It's quite a moving feast, this. There, there's lots of different sections to it. So they'll start off arguing individually, then they're going to swap seats, uh, argue with a different person, swap seats again, argue with a different person, so that they collect a variety of different opinions. I've been teaching this class for one and a half years now. It's a, it's kind of a pilot project. The boys were defined as being potentially at risk of underachieving. Um, and so, so we're studying a bespoke curriculum with, with a predominantly kinetic and visual approach to texts. And all, this, all the kind of presets, Mark is suggest that we could have on our hands a huge success. I want to have a look at this Act 1, Scene 7. In terms of, Act 1, Scene 7 is where we see Lady Macbeth being this kind of almost puppet mistress, trying to, uh, trying to influence Macbeth. So, this side of the room, John, Rashid and Eddie's side, you believe that Macbeth is not responsible for his own actions. This side is arguing that Macbeth is responsible for his actions. Go. On. I found from a very early point I was able to connect with, with the young people of, of this particular area of East London. So the moment a job came up in Canning Town, I immediately applied for it and I'm still here seven years later. Tell someone to make up their mind. OK, freeze. You must collect evidence from your text because you're going to do a game of argument tennis. But before the tennis, the pupils must begin to prepare their arguments. As you know, yeah, Macbeth is a strong guy, yeah, but the witches are even strong because they're supernatural, isn't it? He don't choose, he don't say, oh, we'll go kill him, we'll do it like this. She tells him, she makes him know if, if, like, if she even tells him, if we do it like this, we won't fail. The witches push him on, like they show him a dagger. You better get some ideas together, Rashid, because Carl <laughs> looks like he's cooking on gas. Have a discussion, please, Sam and Jack. I want to hear you talking to each other. Of course it's his fault. Well done, he's mentally weak. He killed, he killed him when he was he sleeping. Him. Yeah, he killed him when he was sleeping. So he I mean, he's not a proper him. man. So yeah. he's not saying that he's a man, he's saying that... He's like, he's not a... He's like... He's just scared. killing someone, he's scared. yeah? He's <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right, I'd like you, please, in your groups now, thank you. I'd like you, please, to appoint a champion, OK? Into the arena, please. OK, Joey, can you back up a bit? Right, gentlemen, here we go. OK, gentlemen, may I have silence? Uh, could I advise both challengers that they will need a script to defend them? He's already confused by the witches coming up to him, telling him all of this, and she's been confusing him, she's been telling him he should, he should do this, he should do that. And it's like, he, he, if he's to get there, if he's to get there, and every time he thinks back, I should not, uh, if, I shouldn't do it. She tells him, screw your courage, you, you have no courage, you're not strong. And remember, he's a brave warrior, he fights. His wife just bullies him into it, it's, own, it's his own fault. He should know that he's wrong. So, what a, I've got to say, what a superb rally, guys, it's beautiful, carry on. Don't you think he must have thought, 
maybe I'm supposed to be, it's my destiny. Uh, I'm supposed to be king. I should do this. Maybe God is trying to send me a message through all these people, but as you know, the witches are bad. His best friend goes, could the devil speak the truth? It, 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 it could have, it could say have that again, that. please. I'll say that again. I've got to adjudicate on that, because that's an interesting point. As he got um, his best friend, Banco, goes, devil speak the truth. Maybe for once, the devil was saying he could be a king. He could be a king. This was his only chance. You, and he was okay, done. Do, do, Paul's return. Superb. OK, but it's in, he knows it's a religious society at his time. He knows if he kills God, if he kills the king, it's like killing God. And it's his own decision. And what is he chose the wrong decision? He could have just said, no, 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 Lady Macbeth, I'm not going to do it. That's kiss, killing my own cousin, my, my own king, my own god. And he knows that he's going to go to hell if he does it. He knew what he was going to do. He knew he's, he'll be punished if he's to court in the, in the, in life, if he's to be caught. Right, I'm going to stop here. I think that, that rally deserves a spontaneous round of applause. <laughs> Philip's results are exceptional within the school. In the past three years, his GCSE students have averaged 98% A to Cs. He believes the careful way he marks students' work is the bedrock of this success. In my early years as, a, as an NQT and, and afterwards, I found it terribly difficult. And the, the marking burden on an English teacher is, is quite astounding at points. Um, but it, it did come to me with a weight of an epiphany that actually when you start marking pupils' books with a, d a degree of rigour, that's probably the best way to impact upon their learning in that you are able to give them daily, weekly targets. You, you have, have a discourse and a dialogue with them, which, which can be quite personal and quite jokey. Now, we do know what repetition is. Stefano, actually, and you won't believe this, look at how much he did. Okay. This is Stefano, and it's pretty damn good. In Night of the Scorpion, and look, he gets straight into it. In Night of the Scorpion, the right uses a juxtaposition of men and women. The first part of the poem is focused on the male peasants who come to help the mother, and only a small part of the poem is about what the mother thinks. That's really good essay writing. He goes straight to the point. He doesn't bother with some stupid introduction. Right, what we're doing today. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to articulate your responses to war. I want to know what you think of war, specifically the Iraq war related to the Vietnam war. You're also going to write a paired poem. Each lesson is carefully tailored to the precise needs of the class. In Year 11 poetry, Philip is using a combination of visual and audio stimuli to encourage students to write their own war poem in the form of questions and answers. I'm now going to show you a series of images of the Vietnam war. I'd like you to record your emotional response to that image. So how does that image make you feel? There's a child. Is that a he or a she? That's a she. That's a he. Look at how old these people are. Geezer at the front end's got a moustache, but the, the, the guy there ain't much older than you. Your written response doesn't have to be enormously complicated. I just want you to record your emotions. I just want you to focus in upon yourself. So, so I, either kind of have your head looking at your lap or something. Try and cut out any external stimuli. So this is basically thinking work. I'd like you to think about the following. If you were called up to fight, would you go? And could you kill someone if you had to? Back to the tables, please. To make. Yeah. Right, five minutes, please. In your groups. <coughs> I just want you to have a group discussion, please. Uh, maybe you'd like to appoint one person chairperson a group discussion about the current situation in Iraq. I'd like you to discuss on your tables, Ryan, you need to move in, 
whether you believe the war in Iraq is just, what your opinions are about it. So I want to hear you talking to each other. I want lots of noise. Go. There's terrorists in Russia. There's terrorists in this country, I'm sure. There's ter terrorists in America themselves. But why did they choose Iraq to go to? They have many countries to go to, but they chose that one. I mean, in America, there are many people homeless. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we have to exactly. distract his whole country. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Then go yeah, yeah. to Iraq. And I'm not just his country, but it's none of his vision. The UN say that they shouldn't do it. But then Bush here went there and sent his you're asking questions of the people of Iraq. They're in the past tense. Please, question number one, ask them a question about light. We get to study a great deal of exciting literature at year 10, a great deal of exciting poetry in year 11. I find it to be personally uplifting. Um, and I think, I genuinely believe that all the children that, that followed this course find it to be uplifting. It reminds me of the days I had when English lessons were my salvation. Question four is about jewellery, question five about art. <coughs> Titi, could I ask you to read yours, please, and then Easton? I did four. Four? Great, do that. So read out the, fir the four questions first, and then the four answers. One, did the raid of airships cover what you see as light? Two, was there a difference in nature before and after the attack? Three, did the people of Iraq take matters into their own hands? Four, did their ministers pack gold and run? One, there was no light, there is no light, there will never be any light, the airships blackened our world. Two, nature, like love, you never miss it till it's gone. Three, there were no hands left to take it into. Four, as hard as the gold were their hearts, Shiny and pleasant on the outside, heart and raw in the centre. That's superb. I'd like the first, there, there is. Could you read the first one out again? <laughs> Could you read your first response out again? Because I thought that was really special. There was no light. There is no light. There will never be any light. The air, the airships blackened our world. Um, yeah. The. the the beauty of it is, is that this, you know, that wasn't an enormously discursive lesson, so that tomorrow morning when I get in at seven o'clock, I'll be able to judge how well it went by marking the books. Um, Rahima's response, I think, appeared to be really quite strong. Like, that, that's the, the absolute joy of teaching poetry, is that kids get to write their own poetry, and you know, their, their souls are every bit as valid as an adult soul, and probably a bit more a bit more free in their expression. Where is she? So the questions. Did you dream of seeing daylight during the war? Sir, dreaming is only for those with simple lives, lives which we have no more. So light is more of a reality than a dream. Like, I find it, their response is unbelievably soulful. I get got as much out of reading their work as I do out of listening to a Leonard Cohen album, for instance. Were you scared for yourself and or the country? Sir, scared is an emotion overplayed like the American national anthem. The emotion of scared is now unidentified. Um, I, I get a, a, a deep literary joy out of reading their work. <laughs>